Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Orobotting in Path of Exile, a rather straightforward concept that achieves a ridiculous amount of power in the current meta. But before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe. So as some of you guys may know, many players by this point of the league are beginning to transition away from the typical league starter builds like Spectral Shield Throw and Forbidden Right Totems in order to begin building out their high budget aura bots or aura stackers. The main reason for this is due to the style of gameplay that one can achieve by taking advantage of the power of aura biting. With the recent nerfs in patch 3.15, the overall pacing of both gameplay and character progression have slowed down to a speed that is far from what PoE used to be. And with this change, many players ended up quitting the league early out of frustration or even boredom after finding out that many of their builds simply did not feel all that great anymore. However, outside of this group of players, many PoE fans remained and understood that aura botting was still a very viable strategy in order to achieve the level of speed and power that was so iconic in the previous leagues. The premise of aura botting is to stack numerous auras in order to massively scale the defense, offense, and utility of your party members so that you can more easily overcome the content in PoE's endgame. So without further ado, let's get into the video guide. Now the way aura botting works is by maximizing the amount of reduced mana reservation and aura effectiveness modifiers on your character. This can be done by a combination of grabbing all the aura nodes on the passive tree, equipping various aura scaling gear like Alpha's Howl or Victario's Influence, and running cluster jewels that affect either the mana reservation or aura effectiveness. I found that for around a 10 to 15x budget, I can get to about 300% aura effectiveness with 11 total auras running. Because of the relatively high cost of setting up a proper aura bot, players don't typically league start with a setup that stacks auras unless they are playing with a group of people that will carry them throughout their progression. One of the biggest downsides of playing either an aura bot or an aura stacker is that these builds are typically really tight on passive points and usually will not feel all that great until around level 95 assuming that the proper gear has already been acquired. I've actually experimented with the Guardian to find whether or not it was worth leveling as an aura bot, and from how things have been going so far, it's most definitely more worth it to just level up normally with an actual offensive main skill and then respect your character later. Now let's talk about the different types of aura bots that players can run. This is usually categorized depending on what Ascendancy players choose and whether or not they want to go low life or CI. The typical aura botting Ascendancies that players run are Guardian, Necromancer, Ascendant, or Champion. Guardians are usually the most defensive aura bots, Necromancers are the most offensive, Ascendants offer the most balanced setup, and Champions? Uh, I have no idea dude. But hey, this guy made it work. Now for the choice between low life or CI, low life aura bots are usually cheaper to set up whereas CI aura bots have a stronger endgame setup. The gear you'll want to grab for a low life aura bot are Chevron's wrappings, Presence of Shayula, Alpha's Howl, Prism Guardian, and whatever else to maximize your energy shield and utility. I found that uniques like Ephemeral Edge, Bated Breath, and Sin Trex are pretty nice additions to have on a low life setup as well. Now for a CI aura bot you'll want Victario's Influence, Alpha's Howl, a rare amulet with global reduced mana res, a rare shield with 15% reduced mana res on socketed gems, and basically similar gear as the low life bot in the remaining pieces. For our cluster jewels, the simplest combination to achieve 300% aura effectiveness is to grab two voices unique large clusters with six medium clusters each with six passes, first among equals, and replenishing presence. There's definitely plenty of combinations you could test out for yourselves with the large cluster notables like Vengeful Commander, Pure Guile, and so on. However, just keep in mind the different opportunity costs you take on when considering the various cluster jewel combinations. Now with all this talk about aura bots, I have no doubt that many will wonder about their solo counterparts, being the aura stacker. Though I personally haven't played aura stackers all that much due to the amount of sheer currency that is needed to get one up and running, there are definitely a lot of merits to running an aura stacker over an aura bot. The main appeal of aura stackers is that they are not dependent on other players to deal damage and essentially function as their own carry. For aura stackers, on top of needing to fulfill the reduced mana reservation and aura effectiveness requirements of an aura bot, 
They also need to properly implement damage conversions in their build in order to fully maximize their damage output. Long story short, the vast majority of PoE players will probably never even come close to putting together a build of this caliber. However, for those who do intend to work towards building out an aura stacker for themselves one day, I'd highly suggest that they first learn how to secure large amounts of currency for comparatively lower investment before even considering trying their hand at making an aura stacker. So yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end, and I hope to see you all next time.